Lord. And I don't know how I did this, but I left the house without a handkerchief. Anybody has an unused handkerchief, I'll use it. But anyway, <laughs> amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to go into one of my favorite books, and we're going to go into one of my favorite scriptures. Now, I have a lot. People ask me, what's your favorite scripture? I have a hard time telling you, but I do have a few that I, I really hold dear to my heart. Uh, one of them, Brother Jim sent me the other day. I believe it was for my birthday. It was Sister Marcia, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Those are one of my favorites there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. This is another one. We're here in chapter 3, verse 12, and this will be familiar to some of you. I'm preaching a message some of you heard before, but some of you have not, but this is what I feel the Lord has laid on my heart for us, and it really kind of goes along with a little bit of this morning, at least the, the theme or the, the direction the Holy Spirit is leading us here. Now, in chapter 3 of the book of Philippians in the New Testament, uh, chapter, chapter 3 and verse 12, and Brother John, you can leave it on those verses, and I'll go to some other verses, but don't try to catch up with me on that. That's okay. You just, I'll, be keep, I'll keep coming back to these, these verses here. So hang on with uh, verses 12 through uh, 16. And verse 12, it says, Not that I have already attained, Apostle Paul, full of the anointed of the Holy Ghost, or I'm already perfected. Now, I want you to catch this. He says, Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on. Can you say press on? That I I may lay hold of that. Now I want you to circle the word that. Hold of that. Circle that, that pronoun, for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. He says in verse 13, brethren, talking to the church, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Can you say one thing I do? One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize. Can you say the prize? Of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Notice he says the upward call of God in Christ. Therefore, therefore, based on what he just said, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Praise God. I, I want to minister tonight for a little bit here. I'll preach as fast as I can, okay? A little bit here tonight on the thought, in pursuit of God in pursuit of God or in pursuit of deity. And I pray that you'll open your heart to the Lord here tonight, to the word of God. And let's learn something about God. Let's learn something about the Bible. Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord, I pray for the anointing, the unction, the power of thy spirit. Father God, I pray that the holy fear of God would grip our hearts once again, the holy dread of God. I pray we want the Lord, the Holy Spirit, Father. I pray for the unction, the anointing, the power of thy spirit. I want the burning bush in my heart, God. And I want every one of us to have a fire burning within us for God of passion for you and a time of apostasy when people are falling away and growing cold towards God. Father, it's so easy for people to grow cold towards the Lord, but I pray right now, God, that we would have a renewed fire of thy spirit, that God, that we would be God seekers, that God, that we would be in pursuit of you, of your presence, of your holiness, of your, of your glory, I pray, Father, in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Touch our hearts, Father. Anoint our ears to receive of thy word, and I thank you, Father. I pray in Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen and amen. Praise God. As we open our hearts to the word of the Lord here tonight, we see that in our text that the Apostle Paul was after something. The question we need to ask ourselves is what exactly was the Apostle after? Because Paul said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul was pressing toward the goal, or we can see here that he's pressing toward the mark. So what's the goal in which he's speaking about? I don't know, but that's what we hope to find out tonight through the preaching of this message. My beloved friends in Christ, it's easy in our Pentecostal circles for us to think that we have achieved or that we have reached a certain finality in our spiritual walk with God. And, and some would think that they, they've arrived or that they have made it or they've got it. And, and it's, it's if they've and they, as if they've reached this place of totality or this finality of things when it comes to God, when it comes to their spiritual walk with the Lord. And sometimes they might not say it, but they may think that because they've got it, therefore they don't need it anymore. Understand that when you got saved, that wasn't the end of your life. That was the beginning of your life. 
life. That was the beginning of the journey that God has for you. Your journey of faith, your life is a new uh, now. You've been born again. You're no longer living your old life, but you're living a new life in Christ Jesus. God has a purpose and God has a plan. Can you turn to somebody and say, God's got a purpose and a plan for you. See, God has a purpose. Thank God. When we were lost, there was no purpose, but God gives us a purpose. People that don't know the Lord, they'll commit suicide or they'll end their life because they feel that they have no purpose. And, and really the philosophy of humanity, that's really what they are. If they don't believe in God and they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, or they believe in evolutionism or whatever it might be, they, 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 they don't believe that they have a purpose. But God, the Bible teaches us very clearly that we have a purpose. The Bible says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you a future and a hope. And there's meaning in your life and there's purpose for your life. The, the thing is, you've got to find out what that purpose is. Now, when Jesus baptized you in the Holy Ghost, it's not the end of things as if you've arrived and therefore I don't need God anymore. No, there's purpose for everything that God does in your life. Can I tell you here tonight, church, that he wants to empower you that you might be more effective witness for his kingdom. He wants to empower that my Lord God, get us back to the Holy Ghost. Get us back to Pentecost. Get us back to the power of Almighty God. Get us back to the fire. He wants to draw your heart closer to him. He wants to be more real to you in your life. He's not just God out there somewhere. He wants to make himself known. He wants to be real in your life. He wants to equip you with the tools that are needed to fulfill the high calling of God that he has for you. But receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not the end of things. It is the continuation of things, folks. Amen. Jesus said, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. That's a spiritual thing that he's talking about. Out of your innermost being, out of your heart will flow rivers. Of, how many know what I'm talking about? Rivers of living water. Well, you know, I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost years ago as a JSM on that Sunday morning. Some of you know the story. Most of you do. I won't get into all the details of that, but I want you to know when I lifted my hands and prayed unto the Lord for healing, all of a sudden here comes the Lord. God touched me. The uh, Pentecostal fire of God touched me. I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance, and here I am. I mean, speaking of tongues, divided tongues of fire, the presence of God. There was a river that flowed out of my innermost being, but that was the beginning. I can tell you there are many times and many places when that river flowed again. You know that river began to flow this morning. Hallelujah. And the thing is, we stop up that river. Why in the world are we stopping up that river? Let it flow. Who cares what anybody else thinks? Who cares what they say? If that river begins to flow, then let it flow. Let God have everything that river touched. The book of Ezekiel, it was healed. You want healing? Let that river flow. You want renewing? Let that river flow. You want revival? Let that river flow. You want the touch of God? Let that river flow. You want the bush that burns? Amen. It's not depleted. Let that river flow. I'm trying to tell you, folks, let's not be reserved when it comes to God. When it comes to the Lord, let the river of God flow. That's what I love about a Pentecostal church. Amen. Hallelujah. Abby, Abby, Abby there's no going back, is there? There's no going back. You've had a touch of God. You've had a touch of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Man, she's playing like she's Pentecostal. You know that? I'm telling you, folks, praising God, worshiping God, getting caught up in the Lord. Amen. The freedom of the Holy Ghost, the freedom to praise, the freedom to worship, the freedom to shout. Let that river flow. Some of you, listen to me. Step in that water. Not ankle deep, not knee deep, not waist deep, but a river that's incrossable. Let that river flow. Hallelujah. Praise God, my God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, when God touches you at the altar while you're praying, or perhaps during the service, that's not the end of things. Because you were touched last week doesn't mean that you don't need a touch this week. Be <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the testimony. I can't tell you how many times. It's gotten better now, and I thank God for it. But many times through the years of the church, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Laura Lee. Amen, Sister Jan. Sister Robert. Some of y'all been here with us a long time. You know what I'm talking about. We'd have a great move of God on a Sunday. I mean, the power of God. Sunday morning, even Sunday night, power of God. Next Sunday, pfft. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Next Sunday was complete flop. Say, what in the world's happening? You know why? Because they had to touch God last week. They don't think they need to touch God this week. You might have had it last Sunday, but you need it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. Some of us only have a weekend God. 
I never thought of that before. Some of us only have a weekend God, just Sunday God. He's just a Sunday God. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you something. My God isn't just a Sunday God. He's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's a seven-day-a-week God. He's, hey, man, hallelujah. He's, God. he's, hallelujah. That's why I'm telling you, most people are religious. Not you folks who come back on a Sunday night. I know that. But, oh, let me tell you, because he touched you yesterday doesn't mean I don't need a touch today. Because he touched me doesn't mean that I've obtained or that I've reached some plateau in my spiritual walk, and now I don't need God anymore. That's wrong kind of thinking. Let me tell you, that's a fleshly way of thinking, a carnal way of thinking. Now, there, there was a purpose that God told Israel to collect the manna each day. That manna represented Christ, who's the bread of life. And he was saying that you need him every day. Yesterday's supply will not be sufficient for today. See, that, that that's growth. When you understand a growing as a Christian, growing as a child of God, maturing as a woman or a man of God, you have to understand that you'll begin to understand that yesterday's supply is not good enough for today. I need today supply and I need tomorrow supply and the next day and the next day praise God that manna represents Christ who is the bread of life and I need him every day praise God I need him today and now Paul said in Philippians 3 and 12 if you pull that up on the monitor there brother John uh, Philippians 3 and 12 not that I have already attained or am already perfected look at that not as though that's a King James as I had already attained either were already perfect okay in the new King James it says perfected now notice the word perfect or the word perfective. You can circle that in your Bible if you want if you're taking notes or on your bulletin if you're taking notes. Paul is saying that he's not perfect as far as some might call sinless perfection. I want to be very clear here tonight. I do not believe in sinless perfection. All right, I don't believe in that. I know the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. They thought that they never sinned. I know that. And I know there are people today that also believe in sinless perfection or they come into what they call a second work of grace or so forth or that they come to a place where they cannot sin. Now, Paul doesn't believe that either. Paul is not saying that we're perfect because we all make mistakes and we all have struggles. And that, that, Not that, that we're willing to sin or that we want to sin, but the fact is we live in this mortal body and we struggle at times with our sin nature. The Bible says whatever's not of faith is sin. So you you're telling me that you have 100% faith 100% of the time? You understand what I'm saying? There's, a, there's flaws in that kind of doctrine of sinless perfection. You're telling me that you never have a bad thought? You're telling me that you never sin? You're telling me that you have faith at all times 100% of the time? No, 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 no. But in verse 15, Paul said, therefore, let us as many as are perfect. Now, interesting here. He says we're not perfect. He said, let us therefore as many as are perfect, but thus mind and in anything be otherwise minded. God shall reveal this even unto you. But then he goes on and said, us therefore as many as are perfect now the word perfect here speaks of spiritual maturity spiritual maturity so Paul is saying that even though he isn't perfect in the sense of sinless perfection it's possible to be spiritually mature amen and that right I, I may not be perfect if our sinless perfection that's why we need the grace of God but it is possible for you who are not perfect but yet in right standing with God that it is possible for us to come to a place of spiritual maturity or growth James talks about spiritual maturity who's a person that's spiritually mature a person that contain their tongue. Amen. A person that can tame their tongue. Or you let the Holy Ghost tame it. Amen. You let the Holy Ghost control it. So he's saying that even though I'm not perfect, I'm not claiming to be perfect, there's one single thing that I am doing. I'm not doing one of many things. I'm not in pursuit of several things. I have a single goal in mind. I have a single mindedness ahead. And that is this, that Paul is in pursuit of deity. That's what he's saying. I'm in pursuit of God. He's after God. If you'll read this in the context, you have to lay it in the context of what he's saying here in these four verses. After, he says, I'm after deity. I'm pressing toward God. Paul said, I press toward the goal. I'm after something. I'm in pursuit of something. Now, Paul could have said, listen, I've been beat, beaten a few times. I've been stoned a few times. I'm, I'm here writing to you in prison. I've been through a few shipwrecks. He, he could have said, I, I landed among thieves and robbers that robbed me. He could have said, I was bit by a snake on my hand. I've had a rough time of it here lately. But what he is saying is here that in the midst of these things, there is one underlying I am current in my life. I have a single mindedness in my spirit and in my heart. And that is this. I'm in pursuit or I'm after deity or I'm in pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. Now, now get this. He's not, he's not just following 
after Jesus. It's, it's not in a passive sense. It's not, I'm just following Jesus. No, no. He's in pursuit of God. It, it's like Moses when he, he was on the mount. He wanted to see the glory of God. And as we talked about this morning, Moses cried saying, show me your glory. Moses wanted God. Moses wanted more. Moses wanted the presence of God. He wanted the power of God. He wanted the nearness of God. He wanted to see the glory of God. Do you, you see in his heart that his Desire. Do you see the hunger? Do you see the thirst? Can you feel it? Can you read it in the scriptures? He, but Moses said, show me your glory. He wants more. Hallelujah. And after I got saved, I remember the Lord revealing to me, uh, Mark, this is not the end of things. It's the beginning. God revealed to me many times that there is more. And so after I got saved, God put this hunger and this thirst in my heart and my life. And I began to seek the Lord. And it was because of that that God revealed to me about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But God says, you know what? There's still more. There's still more there's still more sometimes in our Christian walk we, we, we begin to become a little bit lax we become passive God doesn't want you to be relaxed he doesn't want you to become passive he wants you to thirst for him like the day you got saved to thirst for him like the day that God filled you with the Holy Ghost he wants us to be in pursuit of him God desires that Paul saying I'm in pursuit of God because I know I have not obtained everything I need yet Paul is saying I want more I need more I desire more now now hold on now you you, you got to hold on this for a second wait a minute because because the apostle Paul I mean of all people did more uh, for the kingdom of God outside of Jesus Christ himself would you agree with that he probably did more for the kingdom of God I mean he wrote nearly half the New Testament uh, Paul was the one that was caught up in the third heaven whether in the body other body he did not know he had this encounter with the Lord he had this spiritual encounter with Christ uh, he was probably the most spiritually mature man that ever lived outside of Jesus he knows the word of God and he had revelation after revelation after revelation after revelation of God he experienced God's power in his life. That's right. Listen, Paul experienced all these things. Paul obtained all these things. And yet he's saying that we need to have the same attitude that he has. And that is, we need to be in pursuit of God. We need to be in pursuit of God. I don't want to just be a church goer. I don't want to be just a religious person. I want to see a people and God wants to see a people. Can you imagine what would have happened with world life if everybody was coming to church or everybody in their daily walk with God, then their daily life was in pursuit of God, in pursuit of deity? Would you admit here today that we all probably need to have a greater desire for God? I will agree with you. I throw myself in the lot and all the things and all the responsibilities and all the cares of life can try to drag you away from your hunger and your desire for God. Let's come back to God. God, put it in a, a pursuit for you. Put it in my heart that I have a greater hunger for God, for your word, for your presence. Amen. I tell you, you'll turn this town upside down. Where Mary in Ohio will not know what happened to this town, what happened to this church, or what happened to this people if we have that kind of hunger and that kind of desire. I mean, I've known people to be in pursuit of a steak. Amen. Amen. I've seen Christians get quite mad if that steak didn't come as fast as they thought. Man, they're in pursuit. They get out of church. Amen. That's Pentecostals. You have to get a snack. You have to bring a snack when you come to Pentecostal church. It always goes a little bit longer. Amen. So always bring you a little bit something to hold you over just in case. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But a lot of times I've seen this. I've seen Christians get mad, upset. You know, they get out of church. Can't wait till the preacher gets through preaching because they're in pursuit. Amen. They're in pursuit of that double cheeseburger. They're in pursuit of that steak. They're in pursuit of something, whatever it is, they're hungry and if they don't get served as quick as they think they ought to, they get mad. Some of the meanest people on the face of the earth are Christians that are hungry. <laughs> Restaurant. That's what I'm talking about. And, and waiters and waitresses, I feel sorry for some of them. What a witness is that I, I got to get off that. But never, nevertheless, amen, you want to treat them with love. You want to, amen, treat them with kindness. Because I think some of the toughest work people ever have, number one, are working in nursing homes. No, amen, that's, that's hard work. That's tough work. Retirement homes. You ever had to try to work with a bunch of grouchy, I mean, a bunch of elderly I mean, a bunch of, uh, uh, boy, I tell you, but, uh, a bunch of people. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. You're supposed to be here one minute ago. Take my pill. Where you been? I'm going I'm to die. You have to call 911. I can just hear it all together. My mashed taters are cold. Go get me some new mashed taters, all that kind of thing, whatever it might be. But also, the other one is uh, wait, waiters and waitresses. That's a tough job because there are all kinds of people, people not very nice sometimes, and uh, especially Christians that uh, uh, are in pursuit of something like a steak, and they want it now. They don't want to wait. Uh, listen to me. If we can have that kind of desire for God, be in pursuit of the Lord. Uh, mm, listen, I know this. Uh, uh, I realize and understand this immediately goes against the grain of us Pentecostals because many times we think that we've arrived. We think that in our experience with God that somehow we've made it. Uh, we've come to a certain spiritual plateau and we think that we don't need God anymore. Or we think that we've come to the place that we don't sin. No, no, my friend. Or we think we come to the place of spiritual perfection. And so, and so now we don't seek God. We're not at the altars crying out to the Lord. We just go to church one time on a Sunday. I mean, unless you're working, I mean, unless you're working, you better be here. You ought to, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend nobody. I better say it differently. Unless you're working, you better be here. <laughs> Amen. Just tells me where you're at. You say, well, I don't have time for God. The reason why your life is a mess is because you don't have time for God. The reason why you're struggling is because you don't have time for God. The reason why you're worn out is because you have no time for God. The reason why you're spiritually depleted is because you have no time for God. Amen. If you're going to catch a fish, you got to take the time to go out there and catch a fish. You're going to put that line in the water, and you're going to wait until that fish bites. Amen. Sometimes you just got to show up, and you got to wait. You put that line in the water, and you wait and wait and wait until the Holy Ghost tugs on your heart. You're waiting for a bite. You're waiting for something of God. Hallelujah. You got to put the time in. We got too many Marthas running around doing everything, but not enough Marys that sit at the feet of Jesus listening to the word, worship, and the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, we think we've come to the place of spiritual perfection so we don't seek God. We're not praying like we ought to be praying. We're not believing God, not in the word. We're not hungry for spiritual truths anymore. That's because you've arrived, and so now you don't need God. That's your thinking. People say, well, I'm saved. I'm okay. Well, because you're saved, you'll hunger for God. Because you're saved, you'll desire God. Because you're saved, you want the word of God. Because because you're saved, you want to worship. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. I know the doctor says, listen, you take this, it'll help you. I don't want to take that. Doc, I know what I'm doing. You come back to the doctor next week. Doc, I'm sick. I don't know what's going on. Doc said, you take the medicine. No, I didn't take it. Why didn't you take it? Well, I thought, I, you know, I just want to do my own thing. I thought I was doing what's best for me. Doctor said, listen, I'm trying to help you. Take the medicine. Well, I'll think about it. Leave again. Come back a week later. Doc, I'm sick. Doc said, you take the medicine. I told you, take two weeks ago. No, I didn't take it. He said, take the medicine. Don't come back until you do. Hallelujah. Come back a month later. Got the checkup. Uh, doc says, how you doing? Doing great, Doc. He said, you took the medicine, didn't you? Yeah, I took the medicine. A lot of times people don't want to take the medicine, the preacher says. We don't want to take the word of God. We don't want to take the medicine and advice that the preacher. Listen, you do your own thing. You, yeah, you, nobody can make you. Doctor can't make you. I can't make you. God can't even force you. You know God can't even force you. He can't make you. But you got a choice as to whether you obey the word of God or not. But that's up to you. Amen. That's, if you want to have a miserable life, you go ahead and have a miserable life. If you want to have a prayerless life, go ahead and have a prayerless life. If you want to be empty, go ahead and be empty. If you want to run on fumes, you go ahead and run on fumes. If you want to spit and spatter, go ahead and spit and spatter. I mean, if that's what you want, if you want a miserable, uh, lifeless life, a religious life, you go ahead and have one. But if you want the fullness of the Holy Ghost, if you want the power of God, if you want the river of God to flow, if you want a bush that burns in your heart, if you want to, if you want to know that there's something than just the natural but the supernatural things of God, if you want to step into the other realm, step in by faith. If you'll take the medicine, if you'll take the Word of God, and you'll chew the scroll, and you'll eat the Word and swallow it, I'm telling you, you'll kill and encounter and experience God in many ways and wonderful ways and glorious ways that you can't even put into words, but you'll know it's God. It is the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, my friend. Many times people think they've arrived so they don't need God. Jesus said, you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. You've lost God. You've missed out and have become so spiritual and have become so high in your spiritual sin this state that you don't need God anymore. Friend, you are deceived. Yeah. Hallelujah. I fear for their soul. They're condemned by their own foolishness, and you're on your way to a Christless grave. And you know, you, you know what you are? You're those five foolish virgins. I just wonder, I just wonder, Jesus said five foolish, five wise. I wonder if that's the ratio of the church. I wonder if half the church has no oil. I'm not just saying half a word of life. I mean, of all the totality of the church, they have no oil. Their lamps have gone out. At one time, they had the oil. At one time, they were saved. At one time, they, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. At one time, they, their lamps were lit. I don't know. Preachers can try to preach that away, and so that doesn't mean that you can lose your way with the Lord. I, 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 I don't get it. 
I, I don't know how in Matthew chapter 25, you go ahead and study it out, verses 1 through 13, you study it out. I don't know how they can say that these people at one time uh, weren't saved or, 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 or that these people uh, uh, didn't lose their way with God or whatever. Or, or I've heard this, listen, I've read this one time. Uh, I heard one preacher, either I read it or I heard it and said that the five foolish never were saved. That's right. The five foolish never were saved. That's what they say today. The once saved, always saved doctrine. They say if a person walks away from God or a person leaves the, the, the Lord, they say, well, they never were saved. Oh, baloney, they were saved. They were saved. Yeah, they were saved. I know people that are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues that left the grace of God. I know that. My goodness gracious, see what happens when they have a false doctrine. you got to try to make all kinds of excuses with it and make up other things that are not right. That's a dogmatic try to way of trying to, uh, try to uh, defend their point and try to prove their false doctrine. Uh, no, listen, Jesus. He said, he said, you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. There, listen, there are people on their way to a Christless grave that don't know God. They've fallen asleep. They've been deceived by their own false doctrine and false thinking. God have mercy on their soul. You see, it's easy for us to come to the place in our spiritual walk to be satisfied right where we are. We become comfortable. We become complacent with God. We're satisfied just in sitting in our chair. Uh, pew. <laughs> Chairs. Uh, ch <laughs> <laughs> I got one. I got one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your, your pastor's been fighting. I've been wanting chairs for years. And the board keeps putting it down. <laughs> I love that. Got a great board. Don't get me wrong. Great board. <laughs> got a great board because they're the ones that, that vote on my salary and health benefits and everything like that. <laughs> we got a great board. I, I'm just saying that I'm, I've been fighting a uh, losing battle. Amen. So y'all pray for your pastor. Amen. One day, maybe. Amen. Everybody, listen, we're going to come in one day. It's going to be all chairs except for where Jackie's sitting. It's going to be a pew right there. Amen. <laughs> she said, don't you get rid of my pew. Amen. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to have all chairs. The front row is going to be pews. Amen. Just the front rows. Just the front row right here. Pew in a pew. Amen. Everybody wants a pew sit in the front row. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm working on it. Only been for about 10 years. I've only been working on this for 10 years. Amen. Praise God. That's something to pray about. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, folks. Amen. We can, we, 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 we can come to the house of worship and we can sing our songs and we can lift our hands and we can pray and we can preach God's word. And, and that's all good. And I love doing that. That's part of our time of worship with the Lord. And I don't have a problem with that. When I have a problem is when our spiritual things get in a rut. That's what I got a problem. Don't allow your spiritual things to get in a rut. It's possible to be in a place that in our spiritual things to think that we've arrived. We're not looking for anything anymore because we think this is it. Well, this isn't it. David said this. I will sing a new song. Now that David said that there's more glory to God. Have you ever thought that there just might be some things in the spirit that we haven't discovered yet? Yes, that's exactly right. You'll always be learning, always be growing in God. Paul said, let us as many as are mature have this mind and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal. Look at the word reveal. God will reveal even this to you. So God wants to reveal. Paul talks about this in Ephesians I believe it's either chapter 1 or chapter 2. I can't think of it. One or two, one, chapter 1 or chapter 2. But he talks about having a uh, praying for the Ephesians to have the spirit Spirit of revelation. A spirit of revelation comes to those that are prayerful. A spirit of revelation comes to those that want more, that are hungry for God, that want to learn, that want to know him. I know you're saved. I know you know the Lord. I know you're born again, but you want to know more of the one that washed your sins away. In other words, Paul is saying, if we don't have this attitude or if we don't have this mindset that he has, then we need to get it and we need to be and we need to pray that God would reveal some things to us so that God would give us the spirit of revelation that God might disclose or uncover some truths to us that we might have an understanding not just in our minds but in our hearts now understand when God gives you the revelation it'll always be in the word of the Lord by the way because there are preachers that say today that they have this revelation a revelation knowledge from God Woo! it's too deep for you to know that is foolishness if it's not in the word don't listen to the preacher or preach it, whatever. You'll, it'll be in the word of God. You might have looked at a scripture and you said, I've read that a hundred times and I never saw that. And then all of a sudden God shows you something. It jumps off the pages and leaps into your heart. That's the spirit of revelation. Does anybody have a witness here today of that? Know what I'm talking about. All right. Praise God. All right. Amen. Now, now you see, now understand that, that, 
that when we get in a mode, a mode with our spiritual things, so much of the fact to where it becomes religious performance. Now, if it ever, if it ever crosses the line, when it's from spiritual to to religious performance, see, we know just how to shout, and, and there's nothing wrong with shouting. I'll shout with you, and we know just when to lift our hands. There's nothing wrong with lifting your hands, and we know just how to do certain religious things, even without thinking about what we're doing. But if it becomes nothing more than religious performance, then we're not being real anymore, are we? You know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking. Have you now let's be real honest. Let's just see how honest you're gonna be. Okay. Have you ever come to church and you didn't feel like clapping, but you clapped anyway? Yeah. Hey, come on. Have you ever been to church and you didn't feel like singing, but you sang anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Half of y'all honest. <laughs> All right, that's a little weak. I get it. I understand. I have too. I have too. There have been times I didn't feel like it, but I did it anyway. You know what? God bless me. God bless me. That, that's right. There, there's sometimes your pastor is tired and feel like preaching, but you preach anyway. God opens up the heavens and God reveals spiritual truths to you. Amen. Now listen, we 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 know we know just how to do certain religious things, even without thinking about what we're doing. But if it becomes nothing more than religious performance, then we're not being real anymore. Unless we shake ourselves from our state of complacency, God may allow a spiritual crisis to take place. That spiritual crisis is for your own good. In that crisis, God is trying to shake you. God is trying to wake you up. God is trying to stir your heart. You might be going through some things right now because God loves you and he's trying to stir your heart for him. In other words, something needs to blow us off our religious perch. Amen. Isn't that right? And sometimes, you know, something has to, has to, has got to move us to be hungry for God. See, Paul is saying this. He said, I'm in pursuit or I'm after God that I might apprehend him. Now, Paul wasn't just following Jesus. He wanted to catch him. He wanted to lay hold of him. Have you ever wanted to lay hold of somebody? You ever want to lay hold of him? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Whether, whether it be for a positive or a negative thing, you want to, if I get a hold of you, if I can just grab a hold of your neck. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, but, but Paul, Paul wanted to lay hold of Jesus. Paul said in verse 12, of Philippians 3. I press on that I may lay hold of what? That. So let's talk about the word apprehend. Apprehend is this. When you're driving the road at 75 miles per hour and the speed limit is 65 miles per hour and the highway patrol stops you for, for speeding, you have been apprehend, apprehended by the state patrol. In other words, you got caught, right? Apprehend means to, to get a hold of. It means to clasp or to gri grip or to capture. And so it's the spirit of Jacob when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord throughout the night. He had apprehended him. He laid hold of him and he wasn't willing to let him go until he blessed him. Now, right? I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. That's the idea. It's the woman at the well with an issue. It's the, excuse me, it's the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years that saw Jesus walking by. And she thought if I could just touch the hem of his garment, then she would be healed. And so what did she do? She pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. In other words, uh, she was in pursuit of deity. She was in pursuit of God. All the obstacles, all the hindrances, I'm not going to let it stop me from getting to Jesus. Uh, I want to touch him. I want to apprehend him. That's the idea. I think that's what it comes to if we're going to receive the blessings of God. I'm, I'm trying to preach fast. I'm trying to hurry. Paul was in pursuit of God in order what? To catch him. To catch him. To catch him. Now, now Brother Jim, Brother Jim, uh, you know anything about football? <laughs> Amen. I, I know your favorite team. I know it's LSU Tigers. I know that. I'm just going to go ahead and let all the world know that LSU Tigers, is, that, was, that was bad of me, wasn't it? Nobody liked that. Did I say LSU? I had a flashback. I meant OSU. OSU. All right? If you want a Buckeye, a nut for a mascot rather than a tiger, you go right ahead. <laughs> I mean, that's what you want. But I, I know, I know, and I, I, I love any team that can beat uh, Alabama, okay? And, and so if Ohio State beat Alabama, I love Ohio State, amen. <laughs> but uh, you know what happens uh, uh, when that quarterback uh, uh, takes that ball, takes the snap, the, the center guy, what's it called? Center, right? He's center, and that right? He gets down and he's, he snaps it, right? He's a center, okay? And the quarterback gets it, okay? Everybody's after the quarterback, right? In football, you notice this, everybody's after the guy with the ball. That's the key of the game. Everybody's after the, everybody's after the guy with the ball. And so the quarterback, he throws the ball, and the guy's 
running as fast as he can. And he goes, leaps with the sticky gloves now. They got sticky gloves these days. And he catches it. And he catches it with one hand like this. And there's a double flip backwards. And he's running. Everybody's, woo! And he's running. Everybody, listen, there's a guy on his tail. He wants to run after him. But Brother Jim, you know this. He's not running after him just to run after him. He's running after him to catch him. He wants to catch him because he wants to tackle him to keep him from running a touchdown and scoring points. Isn't that the object of the game? Either try to make points or something like that, right? A touchdown. And so he's not just running. He's not just running after him. He's not just, you know, I know some guys can make it look good just trying to run after him like they're doing something. But if a guy, a true football player, he's trying to apprehend him to tackle him, to bring him down. So he doesn't, uh, he doesn't score any points. So Paul was in pursuit of God and pursuit of deity to catch him. He wanted to apprehend him. Paul wanted to catch him. Why? Because God had caught Paul. See, that's why. This is wonderful. See, see, Paul was after Jesus because Jesus had already touched him. And because Jesus touched him, now Paul wanted to touch Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Somebody got to hear me on this. Because you're saved, because of God touching your life, changing you, washing your sins away, now God puts it in your heart a desire to touch heaven, to touch God, to touch the Lord because he touched you, because he saved you, because he washed you, because he gave you new life. And now, for the rest of your journey of faith, you're running after Jesus that you might apprehend him, that you might touch him. And when you touch God, you're touching the glory of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Why do we come to a Sunday morning, Sunday night service? That we might catch him, that we might apprehend him, that we might touch him. And when we touch him, we'll, we'll experience the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul, Paul was on the road to Damascus, breathing threats to the church of the living God. But while on the road, Jesus knocked him down to the ground. You know the story, Acts chapter 9. And it was there that God tagged him. God tagged Paul there. Paul said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And when Jesus touched him on the road, Paul's life would be changed forever. And because Jesus touched him, now Paul is after Jesus. Hallelujah. It took Acts chapter 9, the touch of God, saved him, delivered him, set him free, healed him, baptized him in the Holy Ghost. And now what's Paul doing? He's running after Jesus. He's running after the Lord. You look at this. You look at Jesus, and he, uh, he, he's casting out devils. He's casting out demons. Uh, and then what did they do? They wanted to follow him. He opened blinded eyes. Then what? They wanted to follow him. They wanted to touch him. They wanted to be with him. Glory. We become religious if we lose that. We become religious if we lose that hunger and that desire. Now, when I was a boy, which was only a few years ago, and you realize that when men grow up, they just grow up to be big boys. Because we still like our toys. Don't we? They're more expensive toys, but they're long-lasting. <laughs> True. Because when I was a little boy, the toys that I got there didn't last very long. You know that? And, and so, oh, forget it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I think guys will talk later, okay? Now, now, when I was a boy, maybe you, maybe you did this. I used to play tag. You ever play tag? Isn't that right? And Jackie, I saw you doing it the other day. I saw you. Yeah, you playing tag out there. No. <laughs> you like to play tag. And, and someone would tag you, and they would say, you're it. Remember that? You're it. And, and, and it's still the same idea. See, God called out to you, and you responded to the call. In other words, God tagged you. God tagged you and he said, you're it. I want you to understand something. I don't want to mess up your theology, but let's get to true theology here tonight. You don't really go get God. You don't really get God. You can't go to God unless the Spirit draws you. Do you know that? The Bible says that. There's nothing in this mortal flesh that desires God. There's nothing in this sinful flesh that hungers for God. When you got saved, you really didn't go get God, but God got you. See, he got you. That's what happened. He called out to you. Jesus said, no one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Song of Solomon 1 and 4, draw me away. We will run after you. Psalm 27 and 8, David wrote, when you said, when God said, seek my face, that's the Holy Ghost saying it to David. When God said, David seek my face. My heart said to you, your face, Lord, will I seek. Who's the one that who's the one that reached out first? It wasn't David. It was the Holy Ghost. It was God. God reached out to David and God said, seek my face. God put it in his heart and David said, God, your face will I seek. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
All right. So God chose you. That's why you can consider yourself blessed. He tagged you. And because he touched you, you now desire him. Psalm 42 and 7. Deep calls into deep at the noise of your waterfalls. It's the spirit of God that's drawing you to him. You see, God didn't save you just because he loved you. Of course, we know he loves us. And we know that God loves all people. We know that. But he doesn't save you just because he loves you. God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your life. Paul said in verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I believe there's a high calling that God has for each of us in our lives. I really do believe this. What's the high calling? Well, God looks at you and knows everything about you. He knows your strengths, your weaknesses. He knows your struggles. He knows your imperfections. And he sums up everything about you and he places a high watermark. God takes a chalk, a piece of chalk and he goes whoosh, up here, right? Way up here. Whoosh. That's right. God puts a high watermark and, and he says, this is what Mark Malden can be for the kingdom of God. See, this, this is, <laughs> hey, I love this. This is what you can be. For the kingdom of God. See, God called Gideon. He did this with Gideon. He said this. Remember, God called out to Gideon. He's hiding because of the Midianites, the enemy. Remember that? He's threshing wheat in the cave. Remember? And God says this. You mighty man of valor. He said that to Gideon. Right? Gideon was like a nobody from nowhere. He was the least of his family, least of his clan. I mean, he was like nothing. But God can see down the road and see a mighty man of valor. You see, God had a high calling for Gideon. He had a high watermark. And he knows what you can be for the kingdom of God when he places his spirit upon you. Okay, now... But what, 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 we don't, what we do is we place our own watermark, okay? This is God's. Whoosh, this is ours. Whoosh. God's. Whoosh, ours. Whoosh. Isn't that right? That's right. We put it down here. We put it down lower. And it's much lower than the watermark that God has for us. Our watermark, understand, our watermark is lower. Our watermark is easier. Our watermark is more convenient. Our watermark takes less time, less sacrifice. Our watermark is... We're satisfied where we are. And normally, it's a watermark obtainable by sight, not by faith. Down here, you don't take any faith. It doesn't take any faith to get this watermark. Anybody can do this. A Gentile can do this. A lost can do this. But up here, it takes faith. Up here, it takes sacrifice. Blood, sweat, and tears up here. Uh-huh. You see, we're like electricity. We take the path of least resistance. All right? And that's what we do. It's in our nature. Your nature is not your friend. Your sin nature is your enemy. Your sin nature doesn't want to pray, doesn't want to read, doesn't want to be in church, doesn't want to do anything for God, doesn't want to sacrifice for the Lord, doesn't want to do anything. Your sin nature wants to satisfy and gratify itself. It wants to go where it wants to, eat what it wants to, see what it wants to, listen to what it wants to, hear what it wants to. Everybody has a sin nature. And you can let the sin nature rule you and reign over you, or you can put it down. You can crucify the flesh. So what does it mean, crucify the flesh? Crucifying the flesh means you're not going to allow the sin nature to rule you, run you. You're not going to let the sin nature do what it wants to do. You're not going there. You're not eating that. You're not drinking that. You're not watching that. You're not listening to that. The sin nature. That's right. And, and so there is this battle that we have with this. Now, let me, let me hurry. I'm, let me hurry. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay, so, so, so we find that the, the watermark we have is more convenient. We're satisfied where we are. Normally, it's a watermark obtainable by sight, not by faith. Now, the problem with Paul, the problem is Paul refers to the high calling as a that. It's a pronoun. Look at this. In the Bible, it's a that. It's given in the pronoun that. It's not in a noun. It's not something you can touch or see. The that, the that, you can't touch or see. He's trying to apprehend what? He's trying to apprehend that. Now, what is that? Well, I don't know what that is because it's in the pronoun. But that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out what that what that is but the only one who knows what that is is Jesus he knows what that is and if I can just catch him if I can lay hold of him if I can apprehend him then he can tell me what that is for my life see we must have the attitude that Paul had and the attitude is this if, if God knows I can be this then I refuse to be anything less than that why, why, why be less? Why, why, why be less than what God has for you? I, I've got to be determined that I'm going to be whatever it is that, that, that he wants me to be. I want to reach for that. I want to obtain all that God has for me in Christ Jesus. I want to lay hold of that. I want to be that for the kingdom of God. You understand? It's a pronoun. You see, when God touched Paul, some of it began to be revealed. Look at, look at this. God told Ananias. Acts chapter 9, I don't know what verse we told Ananias. He said, he said, Paul was a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. 
You know, you see what happens? We see the high calling of God begin to be revealed about Paul. This is what he's going to do. He just got saved, by the way. He's about to get saved. He's, he's, he, God, God, God already has a plan and a purpose. You see, God has a that in your life, and you need to find out what that is. Now, let me ask you this. What's keeping you from being all that, that you can be for the kingdom of God, for the Lord of glory? What's holding you back from the high calling of God? Hallelujah. Mm, glory. Glory. Glory to God. What's holding you back? See, so we must not become spiritual couch potatoes couch potatoes let me ask you this have you ever bought a sack of potatoes anybody ever bought a sack of potatoes before yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah and uh and you put them in the pantry and they're sack of potatoes right and and you forget about them <laughs> you know exactly what i'm talking and 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 they start growing these things what are those eyes Potato, how many eyes does a potato have? I mean, it's, as many as they want. And, 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 you, and you, so you're seeing all the, these potatoes with all these eyes growing. And, and, then, and, you, and then you take them out and some of them start leaking. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And it smells. We're going right after church for mashed potatoes, by the way. But it smells. It rots. That's what happens when Christians do not pursue Christ or fulfill the high calling of God in their lives. They become like rotten, multi-eyed potatoes. Ugh. We don't use sacked potatoes anymore. We get it in a box. <laughs> we figured out how to get around that. <laughs> my mama would never have potatoes in a box my mama is 78 years old so you you ladies know exactly what i'm talking about she came right out of the world war ii era and and you, you it's homemade it's homemade frosting it's homemade cake it's homemade corn muffins it's homemade biscuits it's homemade mashed taters i mean it's homemade you'd never buy store-bought that's like that's like the curse of all curses. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but some mashed potatoes. But listen, what happens is we become like couch potatoes. And we're producing that already in the generation today. Already, the world. And, and the government, and this is what we're doing. We're not, we're not telling these kids to get out there and work and get a job and make a living for yourself. Now we want to pay for all their college. And, 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 oh, Lord, don't get me, don't let me get started on this. But there was that one senator, thought she was an Indian at one time. I can't remember her name, Elizabeth Warren. Oh, Lord God. I'm sure YouTube caught this now. Facebook, you done detected. Elizabeth Warren said, you don't know the, the, the struggles and life comes to everybody. And so, therefore, we should pay off all their debt. Let me tell you something, sister. Let me tell you something, honey. Life comes to every single one of us. Some people just buckle down and they get it done anyway. Life comes to everybody. Some choose to work it off and some choose not to. I'm sorry. But you want to use my tax dollars, your tax dollars, to pay for some free loafer out there that's sitting on a couch watching television all day long and doesn't want to get a job and pay off their school debt. Now, now, just shout now. Just go ahead and shout now. I just done got political behind the pulpit. Shout now. Hallelujah. Shout now. Shout now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, man. I had to work off my school debt. You had to work off your school debt. Nobody gave me a handout. Nothing like that. I had to qualify to get any kind of government assistance and all that kind of thing. Had to keep your grades up. Had to be on the dean's list. I was on the dean's list. All this kind of thing. You had to work it off. You had to pay it off. But, oh, we, we've come to making, you know, everybody don't have to work for nothing. Don't, and I can't get anybody working anymore at these places. I can't get any good help anymore because we're teaching all this generation how to get something for free and not have to work for it. What happened in the good old days when you had to work for it? Remember that old saying called elbow grease? Amen. How do you get that stain out? Elbow grease. How do you get that stain off the floor? Elbow grease. How do you? It's called elbow grease. You work hard. Y'all know what elbow grease is? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, that, they, they work hard. Y'all work hard. They got some good working people here. Amen. Let me see. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I quit. Abby, come on up here. Help me stop, okay? It does. It helps me, okay? Amen. So, so I, you know, what's keeping you from being all that you can be for the kingdom of God? 
Folks, what's keeping you? What, what's holding you back from your high calling? See, we must not become spiritual cops. Don't think that you have arrived at some spiritual plateau to where you don't need God anymore. Some folks, they've, they've quit striving. Some, some got lazy. Some quit putting any effort into it. You've given up on God. You don't seek, not hungry. You don't spend time. They spend time with other things, but they've just placed their Bible somewhere. Come satisfied with your own watermark. And now folks have fallen asleep. I got this. Get us bring the church back. Let's bring it back. Wake up. Get up. Arise to the high calling of God. Press toward the mark of the high calling. Do it. Do it by faith. Reach. Press. Believe the Lord. Believe God. Amen. Believe the Lord. When 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 you're when you're worshiping more God, you worship with all you got. When you're in the Word of God, just give it all you got. When you're in prayer, give it all you got. Give it all you got. When you when we come together as a body of Christ, give it all. P B and J, give it all you got. When you're up here, worship team, give it all you got. Give it all you got. You're doing it for the glory of God. I, I, I'm I'm just praising. I'm gonna. I'm not doing it halfway. I'm doing it all the way. I'm gonna praise God. I'm gonna worship God. I'm gonna glorify God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we stand together tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song together. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh me, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, draw Lord. Oh, draw God. You know what? We can do this together. We can do this together. We can encourage each other. We can help each other. Sometimes it's hard. I know that. There, there are times that I, I can feel the fire of God, the power of God, the presence of God, the glory of God. Then there are times I, I wake up and say, God, where are you? <laughs> you know, I, I feel that. I know that. But all I can do is cry out to the Lord. I cry out to God. I say, God, put, the, put that desire in me. Listen, church, I don't want to become passive. I don't want to become lazy. I don't want to become a spiritual couch potato. But I want the fire and the hunger of God. Can we begin to pray for that? Amen. Just pray for that in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Pray for that hunger. Pray for that fire. Pray for that desire. Just pray for that. Amen. Grab the hand of the person next to you. If you have someone or behind you or in front of you, I, I don't want anybody to be by themselves. I want you to pray together. Grab the person's hand. Amen. And praise God, whether it be a 
husband, your wife, or a friend, or a sister, or brother in the Lord. Hallelujah. God, pray for them. I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray that God would touch them. And I want you to pray that God would put that fire and that, that compassion and that desire that in their hearts that said, I'm in pursuit of God. Put it in me. Hallelujah. Put it in me. I want to be in pursuit. I want to be in pursuit of deity. God, put it in my heart, Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. With all the cares of this life and all the cares of the world and all the responsibilities. And God, I find myself so tired so many times. But God, I pray that something mar marvelous would happen. I pray that something spiritual would happen. Father God, I'm chasing after you that I might apprehend you, that I might catch you. I want God. I want Jesus. I want your presence. I want your glory. I want the revelation of your word. I want to know the one that save my soul. I want the Lord. I don't want to be religious. I don't want just a Sunday morning God. I don't want just a one day out of the week God. I want the Lord. I want Jesus. I want your glory. I want the Lord and your presence. Oh God, open up heaven. Help me to see. Help me to see. Help me to see. Help me to know, Lord, I pray. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray, God. Hallelujah. For let me tell you that Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in this place. Jesus has met us here. And there's a message. God has bringing a message. Whether it be through the word of God and the preaching or the teaching or it be through prophecy and tongues. I tell you, the Holy Ghost is calling out to the church to come after the Lord. Oh, God, draw us. God, we know in this sinful nature there's nothing that wants God. But I pray in the name of the Lord, in the Spirit, in the Spirit, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Touch my brothers and sisters. Touch your people, your children, your church, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, oh God, draw us to you and we'll run after you. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, speak the word. Oh, Father, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Oh, Father, when you said, when you said, when you spoke to our hearts, oh, Father, I pray in the name of the Lord that we would hear your voice. And God, that you would speak to the church. You would speak to our hearts. God, I pray. Jesus, 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 speak to us to run after you. Draw us. God, we can't come on our own accord. Draw us by your spirit, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's it. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to touch your heart. The Holy Ghost is going to draw you. And you're going to feel this compelling of God. You're going to know it too. And you're like, I just, I just want to be in his presence. You know what I'm talking about. And some of you do. You know what I'm talking about. You feel the compelling of the Lord. And, and the Holy Ghost has gripped you and he won't let you go. And the Holy Ghost is, is drawing you to Jesus. And you're like, you're like I, I don't want to eat because I just want to spend time with God. Or I don't want to watch television because I want to spend time with God. Or, or I, I don't feel like doing my uh, particular hobby or whatever I would do. I just want to spend more time with the Lord. I can't wait to get off of work so I can spend time God, with God and his word and his presence. I, I, I don't know. I just feel the Holy Ghost draw me into my prayer closet to spend time with Jesus. Isn't that, isn't that what he does? When God does that, don't push it away. Don't ignore it because that's a special wooing of God to your heart and that's what God wants. Pray for that. Pray for one another that there be that kind of special wooing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father God. I thank you for this church and the body of Christ. I, I believe that there's an awakening. There's a stirring taking place in our hearts. God, you're doing something special. And I know that these wonderful folks, I know they love God. I know they love the Lord. God, I pray that you'll even wake them up in the middle of the night. It's just a drawing of their heart to you, of the Spirit of God begins to call out to them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Father. So, God, we thank you, Lord. Bless every person. Bless them. Their homes, their lives, their families, their marriages. Bless them, their hands, the labor of their hands, their ministries. Bless them, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for loving us. 
thank you for the freedom. This is such a wonderful spirit tonight, Lord. Thank you for the liberty to be able to preach. Lord, God, I, I could preach for hours like this, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God's good church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you joined us live, we're so glad to have you part of our church service tonight. God bless you. Church, you're wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So this week, we have service on Wednesday night. We don't have prayer meeting Tuesday night. We have service Wednesday night. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. Come. Bring folks with you. Bring kids with you. Pray for our services and pray for just a continued move of God. When the river begins to flow, let it flow. And let it just keep on flowing. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Share fellowship with one another. Tell people you love them. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord.